Well, 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 look who's here. How dare you attempt to lure my son like that? A girl from the countryside, lacking a proper education, dares to envision marrying into my family? Do you genuinely believe that someone who works as a hired dishwasher, stuck at the sink all day, can become my daughter-in-law? Can you explain to me what you bring to my son's life that justifies him throwing away his promising future for you? Hello, Skylar. I'm a bit confused. We only just met for the first time. Why do you hold such animosity towards me? Besides, I only came to greet you as Kai's girlfriend and never mentioned anything about marriage. Also, it's true that I work as a dishwasher, but is that something to be ashamed of? I earn my own money, enough to sustain myself. There's no need to belittle and insult me like this, is there? Oh, you still have the audacity to be here and preach about life? How dare you be so disrespectful to me? Who granted you permission to address me like that? Refer to me as Miss Johnson and show me the respect I deserve. What an uneducated girl you are. Are you actually proud of your menial job? How much do you earn in a month? Is it sufficient to indulge my son in the lavish lifestyle he deserves? Or is it the other way around? Are you still asking my son for money to cater to your own needs? Of course. Looking at the outfit you're wearing today, it must have drained a considerable amount of my son's bank account, right? Let me tell you, my son might be blinded by your facade and fail to see your scheme to exploit him for his wealth. But I'm different. You won't deceive me so easily. I apologize, Miss Johnson. I must have misunderstood when we first met. You did indicate that it was fine to call you Skylar. However, there appears to be a miscommunication. Since the time I've known Kai, never once have I asked him for gifts or money. And this dress I'm wearing, it's a birthday gift from him. You're such a naive girl. I only said that you could call me Skylar because I believed you hailed from a well-off family or at least held a respectable job. Discovering that your parents are simply farmers doesn't change my opinion of you as a mere working-class individual. Oh, I see. You're a dreamy country girl aspiring to find a handsome and charming guy in the city, right? You plan to gradually take over my son's possessions, the entire house, and eventually bring your parents here while kicking me to the curb, don't you? I've figured it out now. And that dress you're donning is the proof, isn't it? I'm having trouble grasping your point. Why would I resort to such deceitful tactics? While it's true that my family isn't swimming in wealth, my parents always emphasize kindness and decency. Moreover, the idea of relocating to this bustling city has never crossed my parents' minds. So your concerns and somewhat delusional assumptions are unfounded. In reciprocation for the dress Kai gave me, I used half of my monthly wages to purchase him a fine watch. A fine watch, you say? Do you think I'm a fool? I'm certain it's just a discarded timepiece you stumbled upon and got fixed for a few bucks. Or maybe you even pilfered it from customers at your restaurant. I know money-driven girls like you would surely opt for the cheapest options. You claim I'm concocting scenarios and weaving tales. Who do you think you're fooling? I discerned your conniving plan when I heard the story of how you first met my son. How on earth could such a coincidence exist? What are you even talking about? I never buy low-quality items for Kai and I certainly don't steal from anyone. And as for that incident when Kai was attacked and robbed in the alley, it was genuinely coincidental that I was there. Is that so? Then tell me the whole story. Because Kai only mentioned that you were the one who rescued him from the robbery. At first, I felt gratitude. But as I've come to know you better, I can't shake the feeling that this might have been some sort of setup. You see, part of my job as a dishwasher includes taking out the trash at the end of the day. On that day, while doing my usual routine, I overheard cries for help and sounds of a struggle coming from the end of the alley. Despite being scared, I felt that not intervening could lead to someone's death. So, I played a recording of police sirens and carried my pepper spray with me. Thankfully, the robbers were frightened off by the sounds and ran away. Then I called an ambulance for the man. He was still conscious when he got into the ambulance and explained that he was working away from home and he didn't want to worry his mom, so he requested my assistance in getting to the hospital. Kai truly is a dutiful son. But why didn't you leave once you took him to the hospital? Why did you stay around so Kai could see you? Kai had lost consciousness due to the injuries, including a blow to his head that caused bleeding. The hospital was short on blood, and since I have type O blood, 
I chose to donate to help Kai. Plus, he needed someone familiar during a minor surgery, so I had to claim to be his girlfriend. Considering he had no one else by his side, I couldn't simply abandon him. Thus I stayed and cared for him for several days. Ah, now I see it all. It's all part of your scheme, isn't it? There were no real robbers. They were your accomplices. You targeted my son, knowing he was about to be promoted to company director. Hearing that Kai frequently visits your restaurant and interacts with clients there, you realized he earned a substantial amount of money, making him a prime target. So, you orchestrated a plan. You hired thugs to stage an attack, posing as robbers, and you were lurking nearby. Then swooped in, pretending to rescue Kai. You used his hospital stay to manipulate him, pretending to be caring and sweet, and eventually made him fall in love with you, didn't you? I'm utterly baffled by your accusations. I can't even fathom what you're talking about. Crafty as a fox, aren't you? If I hadn't seen through your deceitful plan today, what else might have you done to ensnare my son? Were you planning to trap him? Get him drunk? Manipulate him into impregnating you so you could force me into adopting a grandchild? Let me be clear. You better stay away from my son. I won't allow you to set foot in this house again. Miss Johnson, I've tried to be patient and respectful. Considering your role as my boyfriend's mother and your status as an adult. However, there comes a point where I can't tolerate baseless accusations and disrespect any longer. I never intended to get close to Kai with any ulterior motives. Everything I've done for him was out of simple kindness. Something anyone would do in the same situation. I've never probed into Kai's work or financial situation because I love him for who he is, not his possessions. I implore you to stop belittling and demeaning me. You're not my parents, and you have no right to lecture me like this. You... you're such a wicked girl. How dare you raise your voice and insult me like this? Weren't you taught even the most basic manners by your parents? I can't believe my son is so blindly in love with you, refusing to end this relationship no matter how much I advise him. So, I suppose I'll have to pay a visit to your parents and ensure they properly re-educate their daughter. You really shouldn't speak so ill of my parents especially when you're acting just as uncultured. If you want Kai and me to end things, have that conversation with your son. Don't bother me any longer. While I do love Kai deeply, enduring this baseless slander isn't worth it. I'd rather forsake love than endure this unjust insult. Ah, now I see. How foolish of me. How could I expect someone as money-driven as you to relinquish your dreams of wealth? Well then, let's try a different approach. Let's both take a step back. I'll give you a sum of $20,000, and in return, you'll break up with my son and go find another affluent man to latch onto. Think about it. The current situation is tense for both of us, right? My son will be irritated and resentful that I'm thwarting his so-called true love. While you won't manage to secure any of this family's assets, because I'll make sure they're kept out of reach, via salaries and property ownership papers. So... Why don't we strike a deal and find the best path forward? Isn't $20,000 a generous offer? Just imagine how many dishes you'd need to wash to earn that much money. Have you even read any of my previous messages? Why do you always assume that girls like me from the countryside move to the city just to snag a wealthy husband? Do you believe money can manipulate me? I'm not passing judgment on you, just speaking the plain truth. Come on, what's holding you back? Or are you suggesting this sum isn't sufficient? You certainly know how to put a price on things. Very well, let's consider this. You're also the one who saved my son's life. Would $20,100 suffice? Frankly, that's already quite excessive. I can't possibly increase the offer. Your attempts to manipulate the situation won't succeed either. Kai and I share a genuine connection that transcends materialistic notions. I refuse to let your misconceptions taint our relationship. If you truly care about your son's happiness, try to understand him and his choices rather than trying to control his life through money. Oh, spare me the self-righteousness. It's clear you're more interested in my son's wealth than you'd like to admit. My offer is more than generous considering your background. You're playing hard to get, but remember, my patience isn't endless. I won't stand by and watch my son get manipulated and deceived by someone like you. 
This is your chance to secure a comfortable future for yourself, and all you have to do is walk away. If you're feeling shy about it, consider it a gesture of appreciation for the time you spent looking after Kai. I have no reason to be shy, nor do I need your money. My actions were driven by care for Kai, not some ulterior motive. Your assumptions about my intentions are both offensive and baseless. <laughs> oh, come on now. No need to put up a front. If you're too proud to accept it as payment, think of it as a token of gratitude for taking care of my son during his time of need. If you insist on this, fine. I'll accept your thanks and consider it a sign of your acknowledgement for what I did for Kai. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a great choice. I hope we'll never meet each other again. Edna, oh my dear girl, why haven't you visited me all week? You have no idea how much I've been looking forward to seeing you again. Miss Johnson, why are you suddenly getting in touch? Didn't you make it clear the last time that you wanted me to stay away and not contact you? This change in attitude is surprising. Oh, come on. Why the formalities, Miss Johnson? Aren't we much closer than that? Call me Skylar. No, wait. Even better. Call me your mother-in-law, my lovely daughter-in-law. Over the past week, I've been reflecting a lot on how I misjudged you. I've heard stories about your kindness from Kai, and he's quite upset with me for the way I treated you. After much consideration, I realize that you're the daughter-in-law I've always wanted. Miss Johnson, are you being sincere? I'm finding it a bit hard to believe all of this so suddenly. Edna, Skylar, please. If you keep up with the formalities, I might just get mad at you. All right, Skylar. But what's the reason behind contacting me today? Well, I heard Kai mention that you're still renting a place, right? The thought worries me. Coming home late from work and being alone, isn't that risky? There are potential dangers, and you never know who might be lurking around. Or, have you considered moving in with us? I mean, I do have a spare bedroom. If you come here, I can take care of you, cook for you, and Kai can help with transportation to work. It's true that living alone can be a bit unnerving sometimes, but on the flip side, I feel a sense of independence. Moving into your house might not be the best move, especially since we're still relatively new to each other. And didn't you previously worry about me trying to take advantage of your family's wealth? Why the sudden change? Haven't I explained that already? I truly see you as my daughter-in-law. You know, Kai is my only son. And I always wish for a daughter-in-law I could love like my own. From the moment I met you, I felt a connection. I must admit, the tough act I put on was just a test to see if you'd prioritize money over my son. But now, I'm convinced you're a wonderful girl, a perfect match for my son. And remember, sooner or later we'll all be one family, so there's no need to be shy. I still sense some uncertainty in all this. Edna, let's put aside what I said before. It's something all mothers do, just a protective measure to ensure their child's happiness. Trust me, Edna, and don't worry about my earlier words. Move in with us, with me and Kai. Do you know how much it pained me to notice calluses and roughness on your hands when I touch them? Living on your own, you might not be taking the best care of yourself, right? Besides, you've mentioned your love for Kai before. Wouldn't you want a more committed relationship with my son? Skylar, I appreciate your apparent change of heart and your offer, but I must admit... This sudden shift in attitude raises some suspicions. I need time to process everything. Don't be so cautious, dear. This is an opportunity for you to secure a better life. You'll be embraced wholeheartedly into the family. Now, on to another matter. You've won a fortune, Edna. What are you still doing, toiling away at your job? Why not indulge in the luxury your winnings can offer? Hold on, what are you talking about? What winnings? Stop the act. I'm not in the dark anymore. I overheard Kai talking to you yesterday. About the lottery. You won, didn't you? Ah, that's what this is about. Yes, it's true. I won the lottery. I knew it! I had a hunch about your potential. And you snagged the jackpot. Let's see. Over 100 million dollars, even after taxes, you're left with... 
around $60 million. Am I right? Incredible. That sum could secure a lavish life for my son and me. So, have you collected your winnings? Not yet. I'm planning to do that this weekend. I thought I'd use part of it to treat Kai to a special meal. A special meal with hundreds of millions? You're more frugal than I thought. So what's the plan for the rest? Self-indulgence? Or will you consider getting something for me, your prospective mother-in-law? I hadn't quite considered that angle. In that case, yes. I can allocate half of the winnings to you as a gesture of appreciation for acknowledging my relationship with Kai. Half, huh? That's fascinating. Half of $60 million, around $30 million? Astonishing. What am I going to do with all that wealth? <laughs> Edna, you truly are shaping up to be a valuable future daughter-in-law. Wait, $30 million? That doesn't make sense to me. Save your excuses. You said you'd give me half of the winnings. And half is $30 million. But let's not get sidetracked. Why aren't you claiming your prize immediately? I have my eye on a list of luxury items that are calling my name. It's a dream come true. Shopping without a care about the bill. Skylar, could you please pause and listen to me for a moment? Edna, I'm swamped right now. If you have something to say, can it wait? I've got shopping dates with friends, and I need to relish this newfound shopping spree. Anyway, don't forget to move in. That way I can keep my eyes on your lottery ticket. Catch you later. And once you have the winnings, just transfer the amount to me as promised. Skylar? Please wait. Listen to me. Skylar? Where are you? Edna, I'm starting to lose my patience. Why haven't you moved into my house yet? Did you run off with that winning ticket of yours? Skylar, I've thought it through. I don't think it's very reasonable to move into your house. So I decided to move to a new apartment. You don't have to worry about me. This apartment is very safe and also very close to where I work. You have to move back to my house immediately. You're a scheming woman. When you have nothing, you cling to my son. Do everything to please me. So now that you've won the jackpot, have you already started giving up your acquaintance with me? Or is it that you have money now so you despise my family? Unacceptable. I see through your game now. You must be regretting that promise you made to split the money with me. That's it, isn't it? You're hiding, hoping to avoid your commitment. No, Skylar, you're misunderstanding. I didn't even second guess it. I don't mean to despise or shirk that promise. Actually, I just finished claiming my reward and was about to text you. Oh, really? <laughs> my lovely, beautiful daughter-in-law. Do you know how long I've been waiting for you? Hurry up and transfer the money to me. Do you know how much I was looking forward to it? I even made a deposit to buy a supercar and a villa. And to celebrate, I even booked tickets to invite my friends to travel to Europe. Tomorrow is the day to pay the remaining debts. But fortunately, my lovely daughter-in-law has already transferred the money to me. A life of wealth and fame is about to come to me. Oh, I don't think you can do that much with just $300. I have already transferred the money to you. You can check if you have received it. Oh, of course, it will do many things. That's an amount that even in my dreams, I never thought I'd get. Oh, wait, Edna, you seem to have made a mistake here. You were supposed to give me $30 million, not 300. Looks like you missed a few zeros already. Give me my money back now. Ah, uh, I see. Or is it because the bank doesn't let you transfer such a large amount at once? So you have to split it up into so many transfers. If so, why don't you just give me a few thousand dollars for such a meager amount? Um, actually, I transferred the exact amount I promised to give you, didn't I? Half of the winnings. That's $300. But why do you keep mentioning $30 million? How do I have such a large amount of money to transfer to you? Oh, this must be a joke, right? Edna, you know, you're not a funny person because this joke isn't funny. If you're smart, then give me the money I deserve before I get mad and get all the money back. You were supposed to give me $30 million, not $300. I'm not getting it, Skylar. Who told you I won the jackpot? Skylar, I never claimed to have won the jackpot. Yes, I won the lottery, but it was a consolation prize, not millions. And after deducting the taxes and other fees, I only got $600. Are 
Are you serious? You've got to be kidding me. Edna, you won the jackpot. A fortune worth millions of dollars. And you're telling me you only received $600? Oh, I understand. You want to monopolize that money alone. So you lied about getting that little amount, right? You really are a spoiled girl. How dare you lie to an adult like that? I won't let you monopolize that award alone. Hurry up and give all the money you won. After all, that ticket was originally mine. I'm sure you used the money I gave you to get away from my son to buy a lottery ticket. At first, I felt sorry for you because you were so poor, so I lovingly gave you half of the reward. But now I realize you are the one who took that money and ran away alone. If that's the case, then I will not give you any more, but will get all the money you won. You're being a bit unreasonable, Skylar. The money you gave me? I have already transferred it all to Kai because he said he wanted to invest in something, so he needed money. And since I don't need that money, I don't want to keep it either. Oh, now you're trying to twist the story. I've had enough of your lies, Edna. Just give me the money you owe me right now. Ugh, I've already spent all my money. And now creditors are calling, texting, and even coming to my house, knocking on my door asking for money. Stupid people indeed. How dare they mess with me? Don't they know that I'm about to become a millionaire? Stop hiding it. Quickly give me the $60 million. Skylar, I really don't understand what you're talking about. Which creditor are you referring to? No time for your game. I borrowed money from loan sharks and mortgaged the house for $2 million in advance to buy luxury items, thinking you had tens of millions of dollars. I spent all that money thinking you will pay me back once you get your winnings. Now debt collectors are after me, and I need that money immediately. Oh no, they're knocking on my door. They're forcing me out of the house because now this house belongs to them? Wait, what? Loan sharks? Mortgaging the house? Two million dollars? Skylar, this is more serious than I thought. Quickly, give me two million dollars so I can pay them off. They look really tough with lots of tattoos and angry faces. Debt collectors are even starting to break down the door. Oh no, this is completely your fault. You must be responsible for paying off all this debt for me. Skylar, I never knew anything about this. I thought we were discussing splitting the winnings, not these debts. I never said I'd give you a few million dollars or anything like that. I never said I won the jackpot, did I? And I certainly didn't ask you to spend money on frivolous things. It's all because of your own illusions. So this is completely your fault, not mine. You should be responsible for your own thoughtless actions. But if they're breaking into your house, why don't you call the police? How can you deny the whole responsibility like that? Why didn't you make it clear to me from the beginning, but be vague and make me misunderstand? Why didn't you stop me when you heard me talk about buying so many things? I understand. It's all your trap. You made me spend all my family money and debt because you know you won't get another chance to take over my family's property. So you made me bankrupt myself. You really are a cunning woman. How can I call the police? Because they have a promissory note that I signed myself. And there's a clause in it that if I don't pay on time, this house will belong to the creditor. Besides, if I call the police, won't the neighbors know about this embarrassing thing? No, no. That would ruin my reputation. Edna, I don't have time to talk bullshit like this. The creditor is breathing down my neck. I need that money now. Don't you dare call me names, Skylar. I won't take responsibility for your mistakes. You took advantage of me just like you thought I was using you. You have no idea what responsibility means, do you? Now you're drowning in your own mess, and you expect me to bail you out? You're delusional. Edna, please, I'm begging you. I'm trapped in a nightmare of my own making. If Kai finds out about this, he'll never forgive me. He'll hate me forever. I don't have any money left. I've squandered it all. I don't know what to do. The debt collectors are relentless, and I'm drowning in this mess. Skylar, you brought this upon yourself. You manipulated and deceived me. And now you expect me to rescue you from your own recklessness? Why should I help you after everything you've done? I know I don't deserve your help, Edna. But I'm out of options. If you pay off this debt, 
I promise I'll make things right. Please help me. I'll accept you as my daughter-in-law. I'll change. I'll become a better person. Please, Edna, give me a chance to fix this mess I've created. Skylar, I understand you're in a difficult situation. But I can't take responsibility for a debt that you owe to someone else. This is a situation of your own making, and it's not my place to fix it for you. You need to face the consequences of your actions and find a way to resolve this on your own. Skylar, I've already made my decision. I don't intend to be your daughter-in-law. Our interactions have shown me that our relationship wouldn't be healthy. Your constant criticism, disrespect, and attempts to manipulate me are not qualities I want in a mother-in-law. Edna, please! I'm terrified right now! Debt collectors are at my door and they're looking for me. I'm hiding under the bed as I'm texting you. They're demanding the money and I don't know what to do. I'm scared for my life, Edna. Please, you're the only one I can turn to. In a desperate attempt to help Skylar, I made the difficult decision to call the police. Despite the risk, I believed it was the right thing to do to ensure her safety. However, as the police intervened and the situation was diffused, Skylar's reaction was far from what I had expected. Instead of gratitude, her words were laced with anger and blame, as if I had betrayed her in some way. Kai, who had been informed of the unfolding drama, was disheartened to learn the truth about his mother's actions. He was furious, not only about the financial mess she had gotten herself into, but also about the years of mistreatment and insults she had directed at me. The realization hit him hard, and he chose to distance himself from his mother, leaving the house and cutting off contact. Skylar's pleas to Kai for help fell on deaf ears. The bond between mother and son was irreparably shattered by her actions. As time passed, the weight of her financial troubles grew heavier. She lost her house and all remaining possessions. A harsh consequence of her reckless decisions and refusal to take responsibility. On the other side of the spectrum, my relationship with Kai flourished. The truth had brought us closer and his unwavering support was a testament to the strength of our connection. We faced challenges head-on, communicating openly and honestly about our feelings, doubts, and fears. Maybe we weren't swimming in dough, but our love bank was full. Kai stuck by me like glue, and we faced life's curveballs together. Days turned into years, and we kept on chugging. We learned that love's not about luxury, it's about being there for each other. Our story turned into this epic of ups and downs, learning to stand our ground, and most of all, realizing that love's the real deal. So, what's the takeaway from this roller coaster? Well, life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. But sticking together through thick and thin? That's the real sweet spot. <laughs>